If you hold forward while you press the second attack of UI Goku's light auto combo, he'll jump over the opponent. This is here to allow him to go for tick throws. I suppose it's a nice little change that adds onto his mental stack, but there are a few issues with this. Namely, if you commit to this option and the opponent actually gets hit by your 5L, you're not able to actually get the combo into the second attack anymore. And as you can see, if the opponent is wary of looking for this and potentially reacts by holding upwards, they're able to jump over the throw and putting you into a bad situation. You are able to steal the corner with this. Because the throw itself side swaps, you actually are able to put the opponent into the corner as well, so I suppose it's nice for this situation too. UI Goku's 5H sees several buffs, namely to its movement speed, range, as well as how it interacts with the opponent in terms of its knockback and stun effect after it gets a smash launcher on them. Let's go ahead and explore the first few properties. In the previous patch, it was a fairly stubby normal. And now, like Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta, it's a full screen attack. This is namely here to give him better conversion routes off of 5S hits in neutral. However, with the changes to the knockback and the hit stun, there's actually even better things that UI Goku can do off of this conversion as well. Let's take a look at the knockback and hit stun in the previous patch. The opponent was sent pretty vertically upwards and you had about 34 frames of advantage to work with. However, as you can see next to the parentheses, it was really one frame of action in this situation. Previously, you could make 236 heavy whiff and then link it to a 5L, which did increase the damage off of these routes for UI Goku, but it always felt weird to make it so that you had to spend half a bar to make a move whiff in order to extend a combo. It was also fairly tight to do it as well, so you had a risk of dropping this in tournament settings. Now let's take a look at the new knockback and hits done. As you can see, there's dramatically more frame advantage here to work with as the opponent falls all the way to the ground. And additionally to that, they're lower when they're launched as well. If you want to use 236 Heavy still, the old link into 5L is brain dead easy now. However, you can also do new links off of this as well. However, more importantly, you are now able to whiff a 236 light and then do a micro dash to link into 5L, completely conserving the half a bar of meter that you had to spend before to get this link. This is a little tricky to do, but I think with practice you can get consistent at it. However, this link very much remains a mid screen only option, as once you get close to the corner, UI Goku is going to combo into his 236 series. So bear that in mind that you're going to have to be aware of what your spacing is on the screen in order to get these routes set up correctly. Another result of this change to 5H's knockback is that UI Goku is able to do the mostly universal rejump that most of the characters in the cast have. The delay is massively different from what you're going to get from other characters as you have to wait longer for the opponent to fall down to the range where this will actually work. It's a little tricky in my opinion, but maybe I'm just not used to the timing yet. With 5H also being full screen, this means that UI Goku has access to some new corner routing that takes advantage of the changes that happened to 6S that did a lot to actually damage his corner combos before. Going corner to corner like this and finishing with it is a pretty amusing change, but I'm pretty questionable about how optimal this particular routing is. It's also worth mentioning that with this new hit stun, you're able to combo into 236M now as well off of 5H. This whiffed before. 2S has some buffs to its startup as well as to its stun time. Let's take a look at the previous version of the move. The startup was 21 frames, and you had 25 frames of hits done to work with. 
With that old startup, this means that you had to combo into this from a 2M. Other normals wouldn't work. Now for a look at the new properties. It's three frames faster on startup, coming out of frame 18, and now you have five more frames of hit stun to work with. The new hit stun probably creates new links for UI Goku to mess with, but also it means that he's no longer reliant on using 2M in order to combo into this. Whether or not this is going to have any sort of implication on his optimal combo routing, I think, has yet to be explored, but we'll see if we find anything. The most important thing about the new hit stun is that the potential confirms that it gives UI Goku. Before, if you hit with this move, you couldn't combo into Super Dash. And now, with the extra 5 frames of hit stun, you can. Unfortunately, confirming off of 2S with Super Dash and Neutral seems to be finicky at best. The difference between these two hits confirming was a step forward from UI Goku, as well as probably a couple of frames of input timing difference. Because of like how minute the differences are in these examples, and the fact that one leads to a full pickup and the other doesn't, I'm not sure if I could recommend trying to convert off of two S's with Super Dash. If you see the hit, you're probably better off reacting with the Vanish to stabilize the combo and guarantee your follow-up. Like the rest of the cast, UI Goku can now cancel his jump special into jump heavies. In mid-screen, in terms of block pressure sequences, there's not really much useful here. In the corner, you do get a little bit of something to play with, as you're able to Gatling into jump heavy and be plus two. So maybe it's a cheeky way of stealing your turn back there. The mid-screen situation for combo routing is pretty much the same. Since the opponent has launched the full screen, you're only going to be able to add this into combos when you're in the corner. Whether or not that these can be added into UI Goku's more optimal routing, I think, is something we're going to have to explore more. The recovery of 6 Heavy, Secret Sensation, has been reduced. In the previous version on Whiff, it was negative 56. This is the new recovery. Negative 43. UI Goku appreciates being safer going for this on a read against the opponent's neutral, as now it's harder for the opponent to react and get a punish on it. The patch notes discuss changes to Shining Soul, UI Goku's 6S attack, and how there's been adjusted timing for storing inputs for 5S and 2S, and now UI Goku will face the opponent when performing the next attack. However, in my testing, I have been able to find situations where UI Goku doesn't face the opponent during these. This is the old patch. As you can see, UI Goku turned around there. And he can do the same thing here. So I'm not entirely sure what this change is trying to address outside of maybe some weird situations that I'm not exploring. If a UI Goku player can explain this further in detail, I'll be sure to review it in my final patch notes video that I'll do. While UI Goku also inherits the ability to cancel his special moves into other special moves during sparking, he gains one more property unique to him, and that's with regards to his unrestrained will, the invincible wake-up option you get when you hold down the Dragon Rush inputs. Now, it no longer has any recovery upon landing and sparking. <laughs> This means that there's a pretty safe reversal to throw out that the opponent has to 2H. However, we should note a few things about it. For starters, it's not plus on block. As you can see, UI Goku is negative 5 here, so he can't even do a 4 frame reversal out of this situation. Furthermore, on hit, even in the corner, you're not able to link it to any normals. The only link I've been able to find in the corner is to his Autonomous Fist, which is enough since you're in Sparking and can cancel into other special moves to extend the combo. Just to give examples of an idea of what you can do off of it. It's also very much worth mentioning that you can't special cancel Unrestrained Will on block. So there's no going into his special moves to jail into any plus frames with his quarter circle backlight. All versions of Godly Display have a few changes to them. The light and heavy have their own unique changes specific to them. The light version has increased movement speed during the attack. In the old patch, it was pretty stubby. And now has increased movement speed. 
So it has a little bit more range. This is partially the reason why you're also now able to do the links off of 5H routes that I was demonstrating earlier. The heavy version has reduced recovery on whiff now. In the old patch, it was 33 frames. In the new patch, it's been reduced a little bit, down to 27, so a five frame difference on recovery. This is also why the links I was demonstrating earlier are possible with the new 236H routes that you can do, as well as the old routes being brain dead easy. Now to changes that apply to all three versions of the move, and that's to their knockback when there isn't a cinematic launcher effect to it. In the old patch, you can see that the opponent falls a little bit shy of hitting the wall. And now... There's a wall bounce effect that you can combo off of. The damage actually doesn't seem too bad in my opinion, but this certainly can be optimized more. Transcendence UI Goku's command throw can now combo against the opponent while they're in hit stun. This has potential use for giving him extra combo enders at the end of his combo sequences, namely off of Dragon Rush with an assist call. This is actually pretty good damage for UI Goku to have, though I will tell you this, it is pretty particular on how you are able to combo into Transcendence off of some assists, so be sure to practice out and see what assists are going to make it as easy as possible for you. I have yet to find any links for this in Sparking, however. This might require a little more digging and some combo routing out there, so we'll see if anyone is able to come up with a sparking route. Guiding Impulse, UI Goku's level 1 counter super, now has a new property where it will combo against an opponent and hit stun. <laughs> This isn't as important for UI Goku as it was for Videl, since Videl's counter super actually was able to enable damage buffs for her. But, let's go ahead and explore what this potentially means for UI Goku. For starters, it does less damage than his other level 1, Accelerating Battle Spirit. Accelerating Battle Spirit, and this combo does 5,887 damage. Whereas Guiding Impulse does 5,728 damage, so if you're trying to cash out and kill the opponent, you're better off going for the Accelerating Battle Spirit. However, one thing to note is that if you're trying to conserve your meter and you want to maintain a particular positioning on the screen, UI Goku can now give you a choice at his level 1. Instead of leaving to burn a level 2 to put the opponent back into the corner, he now has access to this super to keep the opponent in the corner. Personally for him, he doesn't really get much Okizemi off of this one, but I'm pretty sure that you're going to be able to appreciate having some particular level 3s that keep the opponent cornered and then allow UI Goku to play a little better with these teams. However, for characters with beam style of level 3s, they're going to be positioned a little farther away because UI Goku teleports the opponent away from the corner as well. So, you're namely going to be looking at level 3 situations that have a full cinematic hit that then lead to a fixed knockdown. Too far for Cell to do anything here, for example. Overall, I'm not too impressed with the Guiding Impulse change, but perhaps I'm just not looking at the correct supers and the potential team orders that you can now use in order to maintain the corner or get the ideal positioning for particular level 3s, now that you don't have to worry about spending the level 2 with UI Goku to maintain the same sides. There's probably going to be some niche situations where this is pretty useful, but outside of like trying to full-on KO the opponent, you're going to want to go into Accelerating Battle Spirit instead every time.
Like many other C assists, UI Goku C assist has also been buffed. In the old version of the game, this is what it would look like. <laughs> UI Goku would appear a little bit in front of the enemy on a 50 frame startup, so it was a pretty mediocre assist overall. This is the new version. Now it's 40 frames startup, and I think that the appearance adjustment is just to make it so that with the new movement speed that this particular move has, that UI Goku is able to connect a little bit sooner as well. It does feel like he spawns a little bit farther back at close range. Probably so he's coming in with active frames more often in these close range situations. Compare the old close range distance. I personally don't think that these changes to his C assist are going to be enough to make people suddenly switch over to that assist if they choose to play this character at a high level of play. I think B assist is still going to be the way to go for him, especially because his A assist still does not have the iframes that it used to have. UI does appreciate most of the buffs that he receives in this patch. He was a pretty low damage character in a game where everybody's damage has been skyrocketing as of late. And now it feels like he's finally able to maybe keep a little bit of better pacing with them, being able to get better conversions off of some of his full screen hits in neutral if he's able to connect with a 5S, as well as plenty of new combo routes that allow him to go coast to coast pretty much on a whim, while also being a lot more meter friendly because he's not as reliant on spending meter on the EX godly display in order to create new links. Now he can just use the light version and maintain some of his meter advantage. And his corner combos seem a little bit better too with the potential changes that have come on through in order to give him new links as well as to optimize his routing just a little bit more. Still, I don't know if these changes are going to be enough to all of a sudden see a resurgence of UI Goku play at a high level of play. He doesn't really have like anything that's unique about him that really sticks out and he still has several issues that do exist from this version. His 5S still trades with a single key blast and then will lose to the rest of them so his zoning isn't going to compare to someone like Jiren whose 5S is his key blast deflecting and is going to pierce through all the other ones as well. Why UI Goku didn't receive that change is something that eludes me still because I think that's almost all the character needs to have a very imposing full screen threat in neutral. While he does have 5H from full screen, it's not like a Trunks 3M that's going to slide in as a low that the enemy's going to have to worry about. And it's also a heavy normal, so you're basically going to be losing out opportunities to continue your Gatling pressure afterwards from there. Just based on like what we see from UI's kit, it's certainly clear that he is a better character and probably is going to be more fun to play. But from a competitive standpoint, if you want to play a character with strong defensive tools and plays RPS with counters and all of that nonsense, go play Jiren. Jiren's still better.